Hi guys, welcome back to a Washu Nephrology Renal Pass series. I am so pleased to be joined by one of our Hello. second year fellows, second years. Mariah. Thank you for joining us, Mariah. Thank you. Um, you just got back from NBLU. Yes. Uh, so tell me a little bit about it, like um, how was the experience and what did you learn there? Um, so NBLU stands for Nephrology Business Leadership University and it was no words. It was it was awesome. Um, it was really well organized, and it covered a really wide breadth of topics um, that are basically applicable day one of practice. Whether I think it's whether you know you go into private practice or you go into academia, I think both it'll be applicable for both. Um, we went through like appropriate billing and coding. We went through how to navigate an interview. We went through red flags of a practice. Um, we went through how to be an effective leader. How to build a CV. Um, we did this awesome sh Shark Tank um, like competition. I, s I saw it that on was, Twitter. I yeah, saw some of it. Yeah. That was super fun. Um, and I think that was my favorite part of the whole thing. Um, just, it was just like fun to you know, get together with people you've never met before and then come up with something super, I, I wouldn't say effective, <laughs> honestly. I don't know that any of us would have done that in 40 minutes, but it was just something that we were re really proud of in the end. And there was like a radio show and it was, it was a lot of fun networking and... And this pa this past year, it was in Dallas, yeah. Yeah, it was in Plano. Pl Plano. Okay, mm -hmm. so so just a plug for next year, it will be again be in Plano, um, some point in August, and the day TBD. So definitely look out for that. Sounds like everyone I've talked to has said it's an incredible experience, and it's only grown in the last several years. So yeah, it was awesome. Highly recommend it. So glad to hear it. All right, well, we got a case that we're going to present here. Um, and so full disclosure, Mariah and I both saw this case together when mm -hmm. we were on consults a couple months ago. Um, but we're going to present it CPC style kind of as it came in in real time. So I'm going to go through almost like a full history, and then we're going to uh, make our differential before we hop into the biopsy. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. It's a 37-year-old Caucasian male, past medical history of ulcerative colitis, came in for AKI, which was incidentally discovered. Three months ago, he and his wife had a baby, and they were being evaluated to increase the life insurance policy, and his routine blood work showed that his creatinine was up to three and a half. Uh, the only uh, baseline we have was about nine months prior, at which time it was normal. Um, when he was notified of the high creatinine, he went to his primary care office three weeks later, and within that time, his creatinine had already risen to 4.56, which prompted the direct admission. More about his um, UC, this was diagnosed five years ago on colonoscopy, and he was initially on a high dose of prednisone, which led to some steroid psychosis and weight gain. Uh, he was also treated with Remicade at that time, although he did not have surgery. He has been on a stable regimen of Aprizo, which is misalamine, 6-MP, and allopurinol. Um, and over that time, he has been relatively stable from a UC perspective. Um, but of note, the uh, 6-MP and the allopurinol fell off uh, his medications a few months ago to an error in medication refills, but he had continued on the um, Aprizo. He was also started on iron um, uh, two months ago by his GI physician to when some routine iron deficiency anemia was noted. Um, and when he uh, took the Remicade, uh, it is, uh, caused them hives, so that's listed at, under his allergies. His uh, family history is notable for a maternal grandmother with RA, but no history of kidney disease. Um, surgical history, uh, none. He did not have a colectomy. Uh, he's uh, married. He lives with his wife and his uh, three-month-old infant. He is uh, working as a lawyer without any recent international travel. Um, he doesn't use tobacco or drugs, and he drinks alcohol on a social uh, occasion. Um, and review systems, other than some fatigue, was completely negative. Um, he essentially had a completely normal exam. Um, I remember thinking, and I think you and I both saw mm -hmm. him, we were just like, he just looks healthy and yeah. totally normal. He had normal blood pressure. Um, and he looked like a completely normal, healthy individual. Uh, his labs, um, these are the first set of labs we had in the hospital. Um, sodium-137, potassium-4.9, chloride-106, bicarbonate-21, BUN-44, and creatinine of 4.7. Calcium was 9, phosphorus of 4.3, and albumin of 4.2. His UA showed a specific grab of 1008, pH of 6. No protein, um, blood, or glucose. Uh, a urine protein to creatinine ratio was quantified at 125 milligrams per gram. 
and urine sediment did show several WBCs, a few RBCs, but no cellular casts were seen. And a kidney ultrasound um, showed normal size and no hydronephrosis. So that was a lot of information all at once, but that's what we had. And Mariah, can you just walk the viewers through kind of your differential, our differential, as we were kind of um, approached with this case? Okay. So uh, just a quick recap, a uh, very healthy 30-something-year-old male um, with no previous history except for this ulcerative colitis that had been fairly well controlled, um, just incidentally found an elevated creatinine on um, routine blood work. So um, physical exam, basically unremarkable. Um, labs, except for the elevated creatinine, essentially um, unremarkable. And then the urine, uh, the lab dip was not very helpful, but then we looked at it under a microscopy. We saw WBCs, but no real casts. We saw some RBCs. Um, so initially, the um, my prevailing or our prevailing um, uh, differential was IgA nephropathy. Given his age, I mean, there was a few RBCs. Um, and then uh, given the history of ulcerative colitis, that's the most commonly found um, patho pathological finding um, or on pathology um, in terms of like renal involvement. So that was the initial kind of prevailing um, uh, differential. Other differentials given the WBCs and the chronic misalamine use um, was AIN. Um, other things, although um, less common just because of the history of ulcerative colitis and the autoimmune component, um, Underneath, uh, underlying that, so um, thoughts of like um, maybe like a membranous, although not likely with no proteinuria, or maybe like a vasculitis or an, like an autoimmune process, but again, probably not um, very likely. Nice. Um, yeah, so a lot of things on the differential. I mean, it was pretty clear to us that we were going to need a biopsy no matter what. And so that is uh, what was done. Uh, and so let's go through some of the path. Um, and we'll see kind of what we ended up with. So I wish we had Dr. Gott here. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it, so I'm, it's just me and you. <laughs> Tell us what we are looking at here, okay. best you can. Um, so looking just kind of um, grossly, um, you see a lot of like little purple cells, so suggestive of a lot of inflammation. Um, there's a lot of um, like I don't want to like give it away, but there's there's like a cellular. It looks like an acellular kind of. Um, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can pull the mouse over or not. Yeah. So like in this like area. Like here, yes. In this area, um, so there's an absence of, like of cells in that area, yeah, or you know, stuff. Stuff, a conglom right? conglomeration that will yeah. soon be elucidated. Yeah. Um, the tubules look like there's a lot of inflammation within the tubular walls themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and then the one glom that I see um, kind of upper. I'm having a tough time on my screen. Oh, here left. it is, I see yeah. it, yeah, there we go. Um, there's also your some, um, some like uh, inflammation or inflammatory cells within the, the capillary tuft. Okay, um, yeah, I, I, it's always, for me, so hard to comment on um, glomerular structure at this field. I mean, you can tell that this is a glomerulus. I mean, all I, I can say that there's no crescent there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not globally sclerosed, but I would, no. let's just defer further judgment on the glomerulus until we get higher up. Okay. Um, but you can definitely see here in this area a lot of cellular infiltrate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see tubules here, and they're not back-to-back. -back. There's no. stuff in between. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is a higher power view. Okay, and again, like you mentioned, the tubules are not back to back. There's a lot of like inflammatory cells mm -hmm. um, between the tubulars, uh, the tubules. Um, so the uh, a lot of inflammation in the interstitium. Mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of stain is this? This is a. PAS. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and I think you can see that because you can see the basement membrane Membranes. of the tubules mm -hmm. so nicely. And that um, looks pretty intact, um, mm -hmm. the basement membranes, they don't look too thick. Yeah, so. so you mentioned kind of just all the cellular infiltrate here. Um, I'd say mostly lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. What's this here that we're looking at? Okay, um, I'm not sure if you can see my mouse or not. Right. Is that a white cell cast? Yeah, I believe so. So this is obviously within the tubular lumen, mm -hmm. 
right? And it's cellular. Right. So this looks to me like a white cell cast. So even though we didn't see it on our um, urine sediment, I believe this is the histologic finding of a white cell cast. Great. Okay, this is a little tricky. Okay. Um, so the thing that glares out to me is this um, kind of amorphous, acellular conglomeration um, kind of in the middle, mm -hmm. um, the, the granuloma or the granulomatous looking mm -hmm. um, d um, structure in the uh, interstitium. Um, again, we see the tubules and we see a lot of like inflammation mm -hmm. um, throughout the interstitium and in the, the, tubule, the tubule walls themselves. Yep. So this is an H&E, and again, mm -hmm. an H&E always is nice to look at cells, so you can just see, again, this intense inflammatory infiltrate, mostly lymphocytes, but the occasional neutrophil, the occasional eosinophil. And initially, when we looked at this biopsy, it, it almost looked like this was a, a glomerulus, mm -hmm. but you know, this is a um, granuloma, as you mentioned. And so we are dealing with some kind of a granulomatous interstitial process. All right, so keeping that in mind, let's move on. Okay, so I think this is just a higher magnification um, of the granuloma itself. Mm -hmm. Um, I just see a lot of inflammatory cells, a lot of lymphocytes. Mm -hmm. um, again, a lot of lymphocytes in the interstitium. Um, and then the tubules are still not back to back. There's still um, inflammatory cells within the walls, mm -hmm. but the basement membranes of the tubules that I do see look okay. Right, so again, this is uh, absolutely right. This is a, the PAS of, I believe, probably that same section of the granuloma that we were looking at. Um, just want to draw attention, I, hard to see with the mouse here, but when you see, look at the tubule, like mm -hmm. looking at this one, you actually see tubulitis, okay? And you see uh, tubules kind of infiltrating within the basement membrane. So when we say the word tubulitis, usually we are talking about some transplant patient uh, and we're talking about um, rejection. But uh, in the native kidney, uh, tubulitis can imply uh, an inflammatory reaction, and I think what we're seeing is this inflammatory infiltrate within the interstitium, kind of invading into some of the tubular basement membranes, and again, ultimately, some of them end up as white cell casts, as we saw too. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, and we're not gonna harp on this, but the glomeruli were relatively intact. Um, there were a, a fair number, five out of 23, that were globally sclerosed. Um, which for you know someone in their 30s, I would say is probably a little more than expected. But there was no um, activity within the glomeruli that we noticed. Um, so what is what was our diagnosis based on uh, this histology here? So our diagnosis based on the uh, histology is granulomatous acute interstitial nephritis, likely secondary to the mesalamine use. Yes, right. So. Um, I just, we just thought this was just a, such a cool case to look at, mm -hmm. some really interesting uh, histology. Um, and we're not gonna get into the details of, of uh, treatment, but we ended up um, obviously discontinuing the uh, misalamine or the apriso. Uh, made a decision to start this patient on uh, prednisone. Um, not quite milligram per kilogram, but high dose, uh, given his history of steroid psychosis in the past and the weight gain. Uh, and he did steadily improve, but once he got to about a creatinine of two, he stabilized and did not improve any further. Um, was subsequently tapered off prednisone and doing fine, um, but unfortunately, due to the chronicity of this process, was left with some resultant uh, CKD stage okay. three. So great read of the biopsy, Mirai, really nice. All right, so quick teaching point on uh, granulomatous interstitial nephritis, because it's not something that we see all that often. Um, but it kind of is in the same category as anything that causes interstitial nephritis. So drugs being the most common category. Um, and in, in this paper, uh, which is published in uh, CKG in, CKJ in 2015, uh, kind of grouped them into antibiotics, analgesics, and other drugs. And if you look at um, the uh, 
other drugs for this patient. He was on allopurinol, and that did kind of raise our suspicion because the patient was on allopurinol too. But if you look at the very bottom, the sulfa, sulfasalazine drugs is definitely up there too. And there are plenty of case reports showing that um, mesalamine and those types of drugs will cause a interstitial nephritis or a granuloma. Um, but then the other big categories to think about are infections, usually chronic fungal or mycobacterial or viral infections, and then this big category of inflammatory or, or autoimmune diseases, sarcoid, uh, tubular interstitial nephritis with uveitis, um, uh, and so forth. Um, so he kind of fit in the drug category, um, and uh, obviously we all wish his creatinine got a little bit better than what it did, but uh, you know, to be truthful, had he not even gotten a life insurance physical, oh, like yeah. he probably would have just ended up on dialysis before we even knew it. So, um, all right. Well, that wraps up this case. Uh, we haven't had a recording in a while, so I'm glad to be back. Thank you so much to Mariah for Thank you. joining us. And if you have uh, suggestions, please uh, shoot me an email on what you'd like to see more. Follow our channel on YouTube at Wash Nephrology. Follow me on Twitter at Maximal Change, and you are on Twitter as well. On Twitter now, So yes. what's your handle? At Mariah underscore Wardy. All right, follow us too, and uh, see you guys next time. Thank you so much.